Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So this question again, uh, we will cover in the video also today that uh, I asked this question that what will be the output of the following Java code? And I gave you this code here, a simple code snippet in Java that I'm having uh, one try block where I'm throwing the exception with the message Naveen. And then I'm handling uh, with the two catch blocks. And in the first catch block, I have written exception. And second catch block, I have written IO exception. Then we have written finally. And we know that finally will be executing every time at the runtime, doesn't matter exception is coming or not. So finally block will always be executed. So what is the output of this? So if you haven't seen this quiz on my LinkedIn, that's fine. You can pause the video and you can attempt the question now and you can write the answer in the in the comment section. But if you notice that uh, the answers are here, like people around 1800 people yesterday only that uh, we posted this and most of the people, they have given the wrong answer. So the right answer for this question is that compile time error, it will throw. So only 26% they have given the right answer. So please try to understand these basic concepts that what is the right way of handling or writing the try catch block, especially when you are having the multiple catch blocks, how to handle that. First of all, that can we have the multiple catch blocks with the single try? Yes, we can have it. So this is a code, let's see that I have written. But what is exception? So exception is the class which is there in Java and exception is the super class of all the classes. Remember this thing. So if you see this, this diagram, that hierarchy diagram, I took it from internet. So this is the exception class on top of exception. I have throwable class and top of throwable. I have object class. So throwable is having actually two child classes. One is the exception and another one is the error, right? Error like VM error or any memory mem error or any assertion or linkage error or something like this, like a stack overflow or out of memory error, which is coming because of the uh, error part. But we are talking about the exception. So what exactly we have written, we are throwing a deliberate exception with the help of throw keyword. And now I'm saying I really want to handle with the catch block. So exception is a super class of all the exceptions here. You can say that under exception, we have different other types of exception like runtime, IO, interrupted or remote exception. And under runtime also we have arithmetic, null pointer exception, index out of bound, illegal argument, IO exception like file not found exception or so on. So you think about that. If I'm throwing the exception, then this cache block will automatically handle the exception because we have deliberately written the exception, which is a super class of all the exceptions. So it doesn't matter that which exception you are throwing it from here. This cache block will always handle the exception. So it will never come at line number 13 inside the second cache block. So that's why the second cache block will be what? Second cache block will be the unreachable code for me. Okay, now the import is coming here. Now again, you mouse over and check that is giving me that unreachable cache block for IO exception. It is already handled by the cache block for exception, right? So it does not make any sense to write the second cache block here, right? So this is the wrong hierarchy that we are maintaining. So whenever you are writing the cache blocks, always remember that you should always write lower to the higher order. So for example, if I move this particular cache block, cut it from here, and then I'm moving it here then in that case, the error is not coming. So what will happen? It will throw this exception with this name and then it will throw some exception there. So where exactly it will go? Then in that case, because now we are deliberately throwing the exception, not the IO exception. So it will go to exception. It will print Naveen here. And we know that exception is coming or not. Finally, block will always be executing. So in that case, the output will be Naveen Automation Labs, right? So let's run it and let's see what is the output that we are getting it here. So here you can say Naveen Automation Labs we are getting. But let's see if I'm throwing this IO exception from here, right? And then I'm just writing, let's see, system.outadventln and I'm printing high here. So IO exception means now I'm throwing the IO exception and then it will come inside this particular catch block because here we have written IO exception. Then in that case, it will print high and then whatever the message that along with that Naveen and then finally block will be executing. So again, it will print Naveen high automation labs like this. So you can say hi and then Naveen and then automation labs will be printed here like that, right? So here this code is actually correct. This code we have written in the lower to the higher 
hierarchy. So here you can say that this is a cache block where I have accepted that we have written. But again, if I cut it and then again paste it over here, then in that case, it will start giving you the error. Why? Because it says that you are throwing the IO exception and this exception will automatically handle it because this exception, because of the hierarchy can handle any kind of exception, which is written here under the exception class. So exception is a super class of all the exception classes in Java. So this exception catch block will handle any kind of exception that you are throwing it from here. So that is what that does not make any sense to write the catch block here. So this will become the unreachable code here. That's why it says that remove this particular catch clause from here. So for example, let's see if I'm writing something, a null pointer exception here. So let's write null pointer exception. And then I'm passing Naveen again from here. So this null pointer exception will be handled by whom will be handled by this particular exception. Again, it does not make any sense to handle with this particular cache block. Although if I'm writing null pointer exception here also, again, it does not make any sense. Why? Because null pointer exception where is already taken care by the cache block. It will not go to the second cache block. That's why this will become the unreachable code here. But if I write the same thing, cut it and then you paste it here. Now it is in the, again, the lower to the higher hierarchy mode that we have written. And then in that case, if I'm throwing the null pointer exception, immediately it will go there. It will print Naveen here and it, it will not go here. That's okay. And then it will go to automation labs, right? So let's run it and see this. So again, Naveen automation labs is coming, right? So let's see, I'm going to comment it out this one. And then I'm writing something integer i is equal to nine divided by zero. And we know that, okay, now this line will throw you what? This line will give you. So let me write it here. This line will give you arithmetic exception, right? Because a number cannot be divided by zero. So where exactly it will go, right? So again, this arithmetic exception will not be handled by the null pointer exception because this catch block can handle only and only catch block. Then in that case, it will go to the exception here. So for example, let's see if I'm writing system dot our advent and if I'm writing hello here. So at this line, immediately it will go to the second catch block hello will be printed and whatever the message of nine divided by zero will be printed here, like divide by zero or divide by something like this. And then automation laps will be printed here. So let's run it again. So here you can see that hello and it says divide by zero because of E dot get message and then the automation laps here, right? So remember one thing always write in the lower to the higher mode. Then I'll do one thing. If I remove this cache block, let's see from here, now, will it be handled? Of course it will be handled because this nine by zero is throwing the arithmetic exception, right? So it will go to this particular exception because this exception can handle any kind of exception in my code now. So let's see, for example, if I'm writing no, throw new null pointer exception. So obviously now this will become the unreachable code because already deliberately you are throwing the exception. So it will never reach here. So let me just comment it out. Will it handle the exception? Of course, it will handle it because we have already written the super class here, which will handle that particular exception. So again, it will print Naveen, then hello. I mean, hello, then Naveen automation labs will be printed here like that. <coughs> Simple. So like this also, you can write it. So remember one thing, if I'm writing, let's see once again, let me just uncomment this. And we know that, okay, on top of exception, throwable class is also there. So if I write the top hierarchy first, so again, can I write the throwable here? Let's write the throwable. Then which will become the unreachable code. Now this catch block will be the unreachable code. You can see that what I told you higher to, sorry, lower to the higher hierarchy we have to maintain. What exactly we have written throwable is a, at the higher level and then the lower level exception is there. So that's what this hierarchy is not allowed, right? So always lower to the <clears throat> lower to the higher side. So now if I move this particular catch block here, now it's not giving me any kind of error here like that. So first exception, lower level, and then at the higher level, then you run it again. This Naveen will be handled by whom this Naveen will be handled by this particular exception. It will not go to the throwable right now. So that's why you can say hello is getting printed. So hence prove it's coming to the exception here. Now on top of that, I'm writing another catch block, for example, with some null pointer exception. Can we write it? 
null pointer here. First of all, see, this is not allowed. Same catch block with the exception also with the exception. No, this is called duplicate catch blocks are not allowed here. But let's see if I'm writing null pointer here. Null pointer exception. So is this, this hierarchy allowed again, lower to the higher. So we can say that somewhere null pointer, then exception, then throwable. So yes, this is allowed. So when, where exactly it will go? If you are throwing null pointer exception, yes, it will go to null pointer exception. It will print that. Let's see. Hello, null. And then here I'm writing hello uh, exception. Then in that case, where exactly it will go? Now it will go to the null pointer exception here. So let's run it again. Let's see. So first it will print hello, null. And then whatever the message that you are supplying, Naveen will be because of this line. And then finally block will be executing here like this. So I hope this is clear that <clears throat> how exactly the hierarchy in exception handling, especially with the try cache block, we have to write. So what is the answer? Again, back to this question, the answer is that compile time error because this is not following the lower to the hierarchy, uh, higher mode. In that case, exception we have written first and then the lower exception we have written here. So obviously this new exception will throw it. It is already handled by here. Then what is the point of writing this particular cache block? It does not make any sense. So that's why it will give you the compile time error. And what compile time error? See this, if I let me remove this line, and again, I'm writing, let's see something IO exception here. Okay. See, it is giving you the, my Eclipse or IDE itself is giving you at the compile time <clears throat> that unreachable catch block for IO exception. And if I forcefully run it also, let's see with the run method, let's see <clears throat> what kind of error it will give it to me on the console. So on the console, it will give you that Java compile time error. It's coming unresolved compilation problem. And with the same message that unreachable cache block for the IO exception, it is already handled by the cache block for the exception here. And at line number 21, we are getting this particular error, right? So that's what the answer is compile time error. Only 26% they, you know, they give the right answer for this. Please be careful with these kind of questions, guys. These are very simple, but looks easy, but slightly tricky. You should know about the concept of exception handling properly. Thank you so much. Please uh, follow me on uh, LinkedIn so that you will get all these kind of quizzes and uh, try to do it, try to solve it. And uh, what I'll do that for every quiz, I'll prepare a small short video like this.